What is going on guys? So today we're back with another Pokemon Masters video and today we're actually be taking a look at Plumeria and Salazzle and giving them their time in the limelight. So let's go ahead and roll the intro so that we can get into this. So the admin of Team Skull is here with her faithful Salazzle. We're looking at a poison type that is weak to water. Kind of interesting. As a special striker, I'd expect us to be hot and heavy with a special attack. So let's get into our stats so we can actually figure out what we're working with here. So an HP of 476, an attack of 100, a defense of 141, special attack of 272, a special defense of 141, and a speed of a whopping 404. So uh, speed not found, am I right guys? So in terms of our stats, we are actually looking decent. Um, I mean, special attack is kind of what we're going to be used for. So that being our best uh, attack stat is perfectly fine. Attack is pretty miserable, but it's not like we're going to be using it very often. Anyways, uh, defenses plus our HP. So our bulk in total is kind of okay. It's not horrible. It's not amazing, but it's not horrible. Of course, speed is the outlier here at 404. That is actually pretty freaking amazing. Um, going to be pretty quick which it's gonna be great. So let's move into some moves here. So starting out with Smog, we are starting light here. A one bar move with 21 base power with a whopping 70 on the accuracy. It does have a moderately good chance at poisoning the target though. So meh, I'm not really a big fan of the 70 on the accuracy, but I guess it, we trade the accuracy for a pretty good chance at poisoning the target. So I guess that's cool. Move Gauge Boost is back, similar to other Sync pairs that have it, like Caitlyn. It will increase our Move Gauge by three. Pretty self-explanatory uh, there. Sludge Wave is actually pretty nice. Uh, anyone else tired of getting wrecked by Sludge Wave in EX Challenges? Yeah, not anymore, considering we don't have to do EX Challenges anymore, and we haven't gotten a new one in a year. 97 power for 100 accuracy for three bars is... That's well, pretty fun. Uh, out of my way is going to be boosting special attack and speed by up to three stages depending on the amount of move gauge that we have remaining. So this is slightly odd because it's kind of vague. I don't know if exactly we're going to be boosting up. Like if we have six bars remaining, are we going to boost up three stages then? If we only have four bars remaining, are we only going to boost up two? Or like how exactly is this going to work? Don't quite know yet. We'll have to see whenever it actually drops. Wicked Enforcer Acid Downpour is a mouthful. I mean, that's our uh, our sync move. Fairly standard, actually. 250 base power with no additional effects. That's all good. I kind of actually wish that it would have gotten a little bit more powerful if the target was poisoned. That actually would have uh, kind of made this a little bit better for me. Uh, three different passives that we do have to work with here. Uh, super Dure Effective 2, which is going to power up moves that are super effective. Antitoxin means we can be poisoned or badly poisoned. And Flame Proof, which means we cannot be burned. So in terms of some damage output, um, I'm going to start this section off with a big sigh. <sighs> so this is actually the spot where I'm going to bring up that uh, with our base powers and our special attack, we aren't going to actually be boasting too huge of some numbers. So if we actually plug our numbers into the damage formula and just kind of basically give ourselves some benefits of the doubt, uh, maximizing our own numbers while kind of keeping the enemy's numbers pretty bland, I guess. If we use Sludge Wave on a single target, we would expect to hit somewhere uh, slightly north of 900 damage uh, if the enemy has around 135 on its special defense. Now, the reason that I'm using that number is because that's the average of all of the defenses that we actually have currently in the game scoutable uh, at their maximum level with no potential increases. Uh, which honestly is a slight mislead there because it's not like whenever we get into like EX challenges or Battle Villa or uh, you know events or anything like that. It's not like they use the exact one-to-one -one same correlation of stats for those, but just to kind of like throw these numbers out there, this is kind of what we're working with here. Um, it, it just kind of seems really underwhelming that like our best base move attack is only 90 seven power and it's just kind of unfortunate i just I, I really wish that we had more so uh in terms of utility as a striker you can kind of guess where we're going here 
Um, oddly enough though, in solo, I actually think that we have a little bit more work that we could do in solo uh, rather than we would in co-op. So in solo, this is where I do really see Salazzle doing some work in the battle villa. Being able to poison targets has uh, proven to be extremely useful. This is where I think you may get the best use out of your sync pair because in co-op, I don't really feel like we have a really good spot here. Like, it's nice that we have some AoE damage. It's nice that we can poison stuff. And it's nice that we have a little bit of move gauge refresh, but it doesn't feel like it really benefits us much on a co-op team. It's just not very impressive. Just underwhelming almost. Now in terms of future proofing, um, as you can tell, we're kind of sliding down a slippery slope here, but I don't actually see a lot of uniqueness here. Uh, short of being a solid uh, special striker for the poison types, that's honestly about all I can really get out of this. Coming off of some insanely powerful units with Red, uh, Elisa with Rotom, it's kind of hard to just accept things that don't live up to those types of kits. I'm trying not to hold, you know, every single pair that we get from now on up to that pedestal, but it's just hard to see the, like, the new sync pairs trend and, like, not be up to par with those. But, all in all, I just feel like we don't have a ton of uniqueness in this sync pair, and as far as future proofing, <clears throat> this thing could get, like, wiped out within one banner. Like, I really just don't see a lot of, like, hold that this thing is going to have on the game with just its base kit. Sync grid aside, we're going to look at its sync grid. I'll come back in that video and I'll try to touch up on what my thoughts are compared to base numbers and then we'll see like how the sync grid, how far it improves it, but so far I'm just not very impressed. But with that being said, we can actually outfit a team to help uh, impress a little bit with Plumeria and Salazzle. Uh, anything that you can increase special attack would, would be great. We do have a huge amount of speed, which does mean that we don't have to worry too much about getting the bar back. And that really makes me feel like uh, Torchic would be a really good pairing here. Uh, add some special attack and even add some critical boost to it. That could actually get you know things started pretty well. And then you could honestly really pair anything else that you want to. Another special striker. Um, a, a physical striker if you are going with Torchic because you will get uh, a little bit of both sides of the boosts. Um, but that's all fine and dandy. One thing that I do think that would be kind of interesting is to add even more speed to this team. So think about adding like Blaine or Surge. Like, oh, that would be so cool. Uh, so as a final verdict, I'm honestly not very impressed and that's gonna be very obvious to you guys, but Maybe I am being a little bit too harsh here, but I really don't feel like there's anything impressive that we can work with. Some bar regeneration is great, and I used to praise it like the sun, but it really feels like it was almost just like a last ditch effort to give Plumeria a little bit more relevance than what they might have originally gave her. Maybe it's supposed to tie into the whole speed of Salazzle, maybe that's what it's supposed to be, but just as a kit, it doesn't really like sit well with me. As a Poison Striker, we're gonna actually be doing some pretty good stuff though, but that honestly just doesn't put us very high outside of the Poison types in my book. So if I had to put Plumeria on a tier list, um, just based on the things discussed in this video, remember, no Stink Grid, I haven't even looked at it yet, I have no idea what it contains, don't spoil it for me. Um, I'd say that we're probably a solid C tier, unfortunately. I can definitely see some uses for us, but nothing that just really boosts us up to great heights as in terms of like just being a general damage dealer. But what do you guys think? I'd love to know what you guys think of Plumeria. I know there are a ton of fans of Plumeria and just Team Skull in general. Let me know what am I missing here because this sync pair just does not sit very well with me. It just does not look very good. So as always, we are gonna go back and do a quick sync pair scout here. So we are still on the hunt for some extra copies of Sabrina considering that Plumeria is not currently scoutable as of this video. We are going to be going for extra copies of Sabrina. So if you want to follow along, we're going to go in one, two, three. Not having the best luck on this banner. I mean, I got Sabrina, so I can't complain, but I just haven't had a whole lot of luck on like single rolls outside of that. What you got for me? Three star doors. It's a Bugsy. So that's cool. We'll take it. 
That is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember that if you want to join the Discord, you can do that down below. Also, dis uh, blah, blah. also down there are links to YouTube memberships and Patreon if those are your thing. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and head out, but I'll catch you guys in the next video.